Oh, man. I hope you are ready for a uh, throwback to Chapter 8. All right. Let's see what we have first before I get ahead of myself. So, we are now in a position to treat the example in Section 8.2.1 quantitatively. Suppose Q1 is at rest at X1 equal negative VT and Q2 is at Y equal negative VT. Figure 8.3 with T less than 0. Find the electric and magnetic forces on Q1 and Q2. Is Newton's third law obeyed? That's an interesting question, isn't it? Again, this is the diagram they're referring to. Q1 on X at uh, X equal negative VT. Q2 at Y at negative VT. And, uh, yeah, you know, we see oh, the correspondences here. What's to be expected. And uh, let's just dive in then. Uh, you know, stare at that you know, diagram as much as you need to. I had to for a while. Uh, yeah. Let's just get, get our hands dirty, see what see what we can do. All right, so our solution comes from, well, the electric field of Q1 at Q2, uh, where R is equal to negative VT X hat minus a negative VT Y hat is E1 R of T is equal to Q1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And uh, we use the same form that we saw for uh, the moving at a constant velocity. And this time you see that since there... I, since they're at positions that are identical, we know that the lengths are going to be similar so that the angle between them is at 45 degrees, okay? So that's why we have sine 45 and how we can, uh, you know, split that up accordingly for whatever we need to. Sine 45, as you know, is root 2 over 2 or 1 over, uh, excuse me, um, yeah, 1 over root 2, you know, push that through so we get 1 half when squared. You know, whatever we have to do, factor everything out that you can with it and uh, multiply through, which we see in the next step. We have uh, the R vector over R squared. So, um, but instead of writing R hat, we wrote the R vector. So we just multiply by another uh, magnitude. That's where we get the cube from. So let everything sift its way through, <laughs> you know always always a mess and uh see what can cancel we factor out a vt you know we simplify the radicals simplify the uh square roots for the sine see what can be factored out and canceled we like doing that and then as you see e1 turns out to be q1 over four pi epsilon naught one minus v squared over c squared bracket one minus v squared over two c squared to three s power and then the r hat over r squared is reduced to negative x plus y hat root 2 over 2 v t squared okay cool so the magnetic field with v1 equal negative v x hat is well now we have v1 equal 1 over c squared v1 cross e1 so you know let the directions take the cross product through clearly x cross x hat gives us zero so we only care about the x cross y hat and that's where we get the Z hat. Okay, no big deal. We've seen enough cross products there. The force on Q2 is therefore with V2 equal negative V. Uh, y hat is equal to F2 is equal to Q2 E1 plus V2 cross B1. Okay, so take all your cross products and maneuver them accordingly. What we see here is that we have Q1, Q2 over 4 pi epsilon naught, 1 minus V squared, over c squared divided by 1 minus v squared over 2c squared to 3s power all the constants we expect then the uh, r hat over r squared uh, gives us back to 2 root 2 v t squared but here we have a negative x hat from the e field a positive y hat from the e field and the v squared over c squared x hat from the cross of v2 with b1 okay that's how we get everything there. The electric force of Q2 at Q1 is reversed. You know, just look at the diagram. We see that E2 is equal to negative E1. So the magnetic field after the cross product is B2 minus B1. The electric force is also reversed, but the magnetic force now points in a Y direction because of the cross products. So the force on Q1 is equal to F1 is equal to Q1 E2 plus V1 cross B2 and if we plug everything in, you know, we see we get a uh, 
pretty much the same thing, except we now we have a negative sign. And that uh, negative sign also impacts the Y hat direction of the V1 cross B2. And so, you know, the forces are at least equal in magnitude, but not opposite in actual direction because of that Y hat part. And no, Newton's law cannot be obeyed. Um, so, you know, that's a very interesting uh, correspondence to have. But the cross products are just, they're just mean. And we have to be very careful with how to deal with them.